Welcome to Cart Rides with Micah. I am here at Thousand Acres at Deep Creek Lake in Maryland with Bob Rayley, the general manager. You've been on the show before, haven't you, Bob? Yes, I have. Once you, before here. And you know a little bit about what this is all about. So shall we go have a ride and talk some turf grass, look at the grass? Let's look at it. Bob, we did a video a couple years ago where we talked about your phosphorus fertilization and the effect that can have on Poa annua. I'm back here at Thousand Acres two years later and we're on the 17th green? Correct. Tell me about what we're looking at here. Right. So, Michael, you know, we, we started talking about this. We, you and I have been talking about phosphorus and, and annual bluegrass for uh, over a decade now. Uh, th we, we built these greens in, t in 2020, and the model we took with the rest of the golf course, this golf course was built two, two phases. The front nine was built in 2008. The back nine was started in 2020 and finished in 2021. But um, so we've got, you know, uh, approximately a dozen, 13 years in between uh, construction phases. But I, through my research, I was a big believer in no phosphorus uh, applications beyond a very, very low level, lower than most uh, any lab is going to recommend. So that's what we've done. We've done that on that front nine, and the plan was to do the same thing with this back nine, and that's that was how we started. So it, at construction, we added a pound of P205 in, in the form of MAP into the mix when we when we established them, and that's that's all we, we, we had intentions of doing. But this green in particular, either the mix, the timing, maybe the map was bad, any number of reasons we, we can't really narrow, we can't really zero in on what the problem was. But uh, a year ago, this green was sitting here at you know a little over a year and a half old and, and, and it wasn't coming out of the ground last spring. So we did some so we did a, a soil test analysis and the phosphorus level was at a, 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 between this one and a couple of the other ones we had, they were testing in at around one to two parts per million of malic three phosphorus. So this is actually uh, an example where we, we looked and said, wow, we, we better do something. So we've had to make uh, a few very small, I think, uh, quarter pound uh, P205 applications to these greens. We made one last summer, uh, I think one in the fall. So we, we did end up adding a little bit of P205 to, to this green and, and the uh, 10th green as well, which were built at the same time. I recommend to my soil testing clients, when I'm making fertilizer recommendations, if they have enough phosphorus in the soil, I always recommend no phosphorus this year. And I recommend that year after year. And sometimes the phosphorus could get depleted at the surface, but it actually could be a bit higher down deeper in the root zone if it's a green that historically had been fertilized with phosphorus. And so I've started wondering, well, if it is phosphorus deficient right at the surface, what would that look like? If, if people do see a phosphorus deficiency, what would it look like? Uh, good, good question. Uh, you know, I think we were all taught in school. It's, it's got the, you know, the purple, the purple haze associated with it or that off color. And I think that was certainly part of it. I think for me, the number one uh, tool that I was able to utilize to, 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 to kind of say, hey, we better get a soil test and look into this, was the fact that um, we could compare it to other greens. We could compare, compare it to other things in and around the golf course that were greening up and looking different. In fact, on these greens, the collars are on native soil. So the collars themselves were presenting themselves differently than the green. So we had comparison that was very critical because for us, this happened at the beginning of the season and this phosphorus deficiency really presented itself to me more in that winter dormancy kind of off colored look it just we never we, we, we weren't weren't changing as the spring was coming along the rest of the grass was greening up all around us and these greens kept that winter dormancy look to them I wouldn't say there was a purpleness to them but more of a grayness or just an off color just a, a, a lack of, 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 of vigor associated with the color that's exactly what I wanted to hear the lack of vigor or lack of growth I think that what you'll tend to see is grass that doesn't respond the way you expect it to. You expect it to be growing more, whether it's because of the season or because of a nitrogen application, and it just doesn't. Absolutely. And if you know that your phosphorus is really low, if you're deliberately trying to keep the phosphorus low and the grass just doesn't grow, it doesn't respond the way you expect, 
maybe that's a phosphorus deficiency. Yep, and that, that, that's how it presented it to us. And again, I think that the combination of the two, the fact that the off color and the comparison, that we could see grass responding in other places, that's what made us realize that it has to be a nutrient level. And the way we're always kind of uh, playing with phosphorus and trying to keep it low, that's the first place we're gonna have to look around here. I collected some soil samples today because I'm so interested in what the soil test levels are. I've never actually found existing greens that were at one PPM or two PPM. And we were up on the first green. I was up there with Tom, the golf course superintendent. And he said that green, that was on the nine holes that was planted. 2008. 2008. So now it's 2024. So we're looking at 16 years. And can you tell me the phosphorus fertilization history of that green and what I may see when I get those results back from the lab? Sure, you got a minute? Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 it got uh, a, a one pound of P205 in the form of MAP at seeding. And that's it. That's, uh, that's all we've done. So I just, uh, we only need 30 seconds yeah, for that. that that's, I'm, I'm, out of, I'm out of time for you. So it, that's the last fertilizer, phosphorus fertilizer application on that green. We do regular soil test result, soil testing, May Lake 3 phosphorus at the local university lab. And it's consistently come in single digits, but usually in that six to eight parts per million uh, consistently. Now we, we're not doing the kind of soil testing that you're gonna do, layering it in. We just do our standardized root zone mix kind of, kind of profile, but we, we, we're consistent coming in at anywhere from six to you know occasionally they, they pop up to eight or nine parts per million but generally in that six to eight parts per million is, is where we've seen them for years and how has that worked I in terms of POA control I it's noticeable for me when I see a green of that age a green that was planted 16 years ago and I saw zero POA plants on it it looked like pure bent grass and Tom told me that he he may find a plant or two at the front of the green but that's it yep and so it and seems that's the like first green right and there's always yeah. this rumor that if you're going to have annual bluegrass you might see it on the first green as it's carried in from other courses and it's clean too yeah so it seems to be working i think it does work i mean i i you know we met you know in, in ways 15 20 years ago when i was doing some research at penn state on this very thing this was my master's project it made sense to me i saw it and i've been living it sort of ever since and and the idea behind it is is simply that if you can keep the phosphorus level at that lowest level and maintain healthy bent grass and keep it below the critical level that that annual bluegrass needs to get established and and that's that's our goal and and the proof is on the ground we've been we've got nine greens out there that have that are as clean as you could possibly hope they would be 15 16 years in again tom makes a good point we do we do clean them up physically removal once a year it takes us an hour i mean it's not something that's that's time consuming or or part of our program but we do do that but that's that's all it takes